Hey everybody, it's Luke over at Galaxy Tech Review, and today I've got a product from iRulu. This is their 2600 lumen LED projector. Uh, what makes this a little bit different from most LED projectors is that this has a built-in Wi-Fi module. It has a built-in Android OS that you can boot to. It is a version of KitKat. It's 4.4.2. It's a heavily skinned version by iRulu, so you're not going to see like vanilla... Uh, Android on this, uh, and that's fine. Um, uh, the fact that it's built in, that you have a Wi-Fi module here, opens up a web browser, it opens up a lot of different things that you can do with this particular uh, projector on its own without having to add other things. Um, you can still hook in your PS4, your Xbox One, your PC, uh, you know, your, your Blu-ray player, that type of thing, and that'll all still work, but you have a uh, more of a diverse ecosystem because you actually have a Android system on here, a version of KitKat. Again, one gigabyte of RAM, eight gigabytes of storage in the uh, Android field of things. So I'm gonna go over this guy really quickly because I did a review on a projector a while back and I got about 20,000 views on it so far, which for you know smaller YouTubers, hey man, 20,000 reviews. For bigger YouTubers, they're like, I get that in like a week. So, but the major concern with that video is that I did all I did was read the box. I didn't show you guys what was going on. I, didn't, I showed you like a two second clip at the end. So I'm gonna flip the script here and I'm going to go over this as quickly as possible and then I'm gonna show you a bunch of video of Xbox 360 input, 1080p input, blah, 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 blah. So let's get to that now. Uh, front cap is a uh, soft cap, which I thought was cool. Very nice big LED uh, lens cap there, or lens there, covered by a soft cap. Soft cap is kind of a pain in the butt to put back in, but uh, you know you're never going to have a problem with scratching your lens. Uh, some venting on the front. Uh, it is a fingerprint magnet. I don't really care about that, but you guys might. They do, they do have a black version and a white version, just so that you guys know. Uh, focus ring right here, very easy to get to, no problem. You've got some buttons on the top here. You've got your power button, your channel up and channel down, uh, uh, volume down and volume up, your source and your menu button, and then IR port as well. And this is where the, some of the important stuff comes in on the back. Obviously, you guys all want to know what makes this... Uh, different. Well, one thing down in the corner right here is has, has a TV, digital TV input here, so you can hook up a uh, digital TV antenna and get TV signal on this, so that's awesome. This is basically just a Android TV box slapped inside a bright 2600 lumen LED projector. You've got two USB inputs, so you can do, uh, you know, uh, just movies on a USB stick or music on a USB stick and throw it in there. Uh, you've got two HDMI inputs. You've got a VGA input for uh, PC, quick PC type stuff. You've got your YPBPR. Uh, you've got a right and left out so that you can actually put this out to a, um, you know, to a sound system instead of using just this speaker. This speaker is pretty decent, to be honest, uh, but obviously it's not home theater. Uh, your keystone correction here, so you've got it right and left. If you need to correct that keystone image, uh, you've got it right there. And then you've got your regular AV inputs uh, and your power input there. Uh, it reminds me of an old Xbox, to be honest, the way it's built. It's not terribly heavy. It's definitely portable. They don't give you a bag for it, so you have to put this in a backpack or something like that, uh, which is fine. That's not a big deal. I'm not going to knock them for that. Uh, the fact that you get uh, Android in it, Wi-Fi module in it, um, you can hook up uh, uh, external TV to it, you can hook up, uh, you know, it's got two HDMIs, two USBs, uh, very, very nice. Now this will support 1080p playback, and this is where people get totally confused, but the native resolution on it is 800 by 480. Uh, there's going to be a lot of questions of what's the difference between that, why do you say that it has a native resolution of 800 by 480, but yet... Uh, it says 1080p playback. Well, it, the system can support 1080p playback, uh, but trust me when I tell you this, when you have this at 100 inches, it's crystal clear, even though the native resolution of this thing is 800 by 40. So it, it, you can go to several different forums if you really need to get in depth on this. You can leave some questions in the uh, comment section. I'll get back to you the best I can about it. Uh, they do give you a, a couple different things here. Uh, interestingly enough, they give you a, a couple replacement fuses in case you blow any fuses in this guy. Uh, they do give you an LED projector uh, user manual, which I'm going to go over in just a second, just for a second. Uh, and then they give you a cleaning cloth here for your lens. They give you a one-year warranty card, so you've got that. Uh, they give you your standard power plug. Uh, this is just like your PC power plug. Just plug, plug it in. They give you a... Uh, 
cable here, which is just your com your regular uh, yellow, white, and red uh, audio or video cables that you can use. I would never use these. Again, I would use the red and whites maybe to output to a speaker system, um, but that's about it. And they give you a full-fledged remote uh, so that you can uh, you know freeze the image. You can flip it upside down in case you want to mount this guy upside down or something like that. There are people that want to do that. You can freeze the image. You can change your audio right from here, mute it. Uh, you've got your channel inputs for your DTV uh, and all that stuff there. So I'm going to end this right here uh, just by saying that they do have a pretty nice user manual. It's all written in English. Uh, it explains pretty much everything. One of the important things being if I want to have a 32 inch display, I have to be 1.2 meters away from the screen or from the wall. And if I want to have 128 inch, I want to be 4.2 meters away. Uh, this will go all the way up to 200 inches. Uh, so you, if you have the space, you can have a huge image. Uh, it goes over a lot of other things, your inputs. Uh, you'll see it has ATV, AV, uh, YP, uh, BPR, you've got your HDMI 1 and 2, your PC, your USB 1 and 2, and then they have a separate uh, Android section that I'll get into in just a second. So this was just a quick overview here. You can adjust your contrast, your brightness, everything, and all this, you know, uh, modes that you've got. Uh, and uh, it, they, they did a pretty good job on this. So you're going to want to hold on to this too. This is important. I know a lot of people don't want to see it and they think it's boring, but this is important when you get it, hold on to it. I'll be back with some uh, Xbox 360, some 1080p video, uh, some Android, and uh, we'll cut back to that in just a second, guys. Okay, so now here we are, and we are uh, going to boot this guy up for your initial Android um, so it's going to take a second. And as you can see, it comes up with the Android boot screen or their version of it. It's in 720p at 60 hertz, uh, as denoted at the bottom portion of the screen. And it will show you the Android logo. Right now, we're about uh, eight feet back, maybe, uh, maybe a little bit more. And the screen is about, uh, I'd say about 120 inch, 140 inch screen here. Uh, you can see in a dark environment, it works very well. It's super bright. Uh, I've got it nice and uh, corrected uh, as far as Keystone goes and everything like that. Now we are videoing this from an angle, so you're gonna see a little bit, you know, obviously if I get directly on it, I'll get in front of it. Uh, I could go over top of it maybe for you guys. Uh, and if we, wanna, if we wanna take a look at it that way so that you get a better idea. But I think this will serve its purpose for our demonstration. As you can see, again, very bright. Uh, I've got some network stuff here I can do. I can go in and check in the Android side of things, network, uh, settings. Uh, if you go into settings, it will actually show you your network, who you're hooked up to, whether it's Wi-Fi. Obviously, there's no Ethernet port, so we're not going that way, but uh, we're connected to Galaxy Tech Review, obviously, no problems there. Uh, you can adjust your display. Uh, you have auto HDMI detection. You can hide your status bar or you can uh, leave that off if you don't want and you'll have a status bar there. Uh, you can do mirror cast, remote control, Google TV remote. Those things are in there. Uh, so you've got those. Uh, landscape on uh, home screen is on. Digital audio, auto, auto detection, those type of things are all set uh, by default in your advanced settings. Now, if we go back to display, I'm going to turn my high my status bar back on because I like it that way better. Uh, the HDMI out, output mode setting is at 720p at 60 hertz right now. Uh, screen saver you've got there, you can set it four minutes, eight minutes, or 12 minutes if you would like to. And then you've got some other. Here is our model number is the XS. Your Android version, which most people are going to want to see, 4.4.2, your build number is there. Uh, the kernel version is there as well. You can do an online system update if you wish over to the right, and there are some more settings that you can take a look at. And when you do, you get your familiar uh, Android settings here, your Wi-Fi, your Bluetooth, your Ethernet, your data usage, sound, display, storage. If we take a look at storage, uh, your total space usable is 5.32 gigabytes, and I have 5.25 gigabytes available on mine right now. Uh, the system takes up some, some of the space there. Uh, and I do have a SD card that's in there, uh, and there's a bunch of space on that. It's a total space of 
Uh, it's a 64 gig card and I've got some, I've got about 56 back on there now. So we'll go back, we'll take a look at some of the other settings really quickly. Oops. I can get back to the, there we go. Uh, your apps, again, uh, you can add apps to this. You can download apps. You can actually, uh, the easiest way to do this is to sideload APKs on a USB uh, drive. That's the easiest way of doing it. Uh, to be honest, I haven't found a, a good store. There's no built-in Google Play Store on this. Uh, so if I want to go to say my apps, they're, they give you an app installer. They give you a browser. So if we go to browser, uh, it'll take us right into over our web connection to Google and we're all set there. Now, if you want to go to a different website or do a search, you can go here. It'll bring an on screen keyboard up. My advice is to use a USB attached keyboard instead of using your uh, remote. So we've got that. But uh, it works very well, very fast, very responsive, very, again, good bright screen. So we've got that. Uh, you've got Miracast built in. You've got a movie player. You've got music. You can update. You can go to settings, which we've already been to. Uh, PPOE. Uh, you've got a calculator, a clock, some basic stuff here. Uh, your downloads again. Your file. You do have a built-in file browser as well, so that you can go through and you can look at your. Uh, you know, the iFlash drive is what I have in the back as a USB drive. I'll show you that in just a second. And so there you go. You've got uh, your basic functions. Again, you're going to want to, uh, you know, use App Installer. Uh, it's going to look for APKs to scan for on your local disk or your uh, USB drive in the back. So if I had an APK on my USB drive, I can install it. I, I may do a follow-up video on that to show you guys how to do that. I'm sure I can get an APK for the App Store and uh, you know the Google Play Store and throw it on there, no problem. Uh, so that should be easy. It even has built-in email as well. So if you need to check your email from here, you could. Uh, so let's take a look at the movie player. Uh, and I'll go and look at USB. This is 1080p, uh, the movie Battleship. It'll ask me if I want to uh, auto resume from the last position because I was playing it earlier. So I'm going to do that. And I will mute it for uh, purposes of YouTube. And as you can see, a great, great, great screen. Uh, great clarity even at uh, this big huge screen and this is projected just on a white wall this is not projected on a backdrop which would make it even more clear uh, but this guy comes up great uh, I have no 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 problems with this image whatsoever it's super clear uh, works super well it's 1080p playback at about 140 inch screen uh, right now I'm about, like I said, about eight, nine feet away from the wall, eight, eight feet maybe. Uh, so you've got that right there. Great clarity, just works perfect. Um, so anyway, that was my uh, review. It's more on this time, it's more showing you the Android side of things, showing you video versus going just over specs. So I hope that my viewers are happier with the specs and with the fact that we're showing you actual video, we're showing you the Android side of things as well and what you can and cannot do with this. Again, uh, for adding the App Store and stuff like that, I'm gonna do a follow-up video. I'm gonna add, try to add the App Store. I'm gonna to try to do a couple other things. And I'll do a follow-up video to show you um, how to do that, uh, downloading applications. Uh, you know, if you could put something like Voodoo on this, if you've got a bunch of digital movies, this thing would be just like standalone heaven for movies. So I'm going to try to do that, get that installed and see what happens. But this was really just kind of a, uh, you know, an overview of how it looks, you know, how everything works. Uh, you do have music here too, you know, local stuff. Uh, you can add apps uh, as well if you want to, but they're all on there at this point. I think just the default apps are built in. So heavily skinned by Irulu, uh, Android 4.4.2 KitKat. Uh, and works really well. So uh, they did a great job on this. I'm definitely giving it a thumbs up. This is going to be in my, this is going to be my new home theater setup for the picture because the picture is just so good on this, uh, especially with the Android uh, setting built in. Now, if I wanted to go to a source, if I wanted to go to source, 
you know, have something in, normally you would see underneath Android on the right hand side, uh, USB 1 and USB 2. You see ATV, AV, YPV, PR, PC, RGB, then you've got uh, HDMI 1, HDMI 2, and an Android, which we're already in. Normally you'd see a USB 1 and a USB 2 underneath, but I booted it up with a USB in it so that it kind of kind of took that and made it part of the Android setup there. Uh, so you can switch over to any of these that you would like to. Uh, you know, if I wanted to go to HDMI 1, I could go to HDMI 1 right away, and obviously there's nothing hooked in there, uh, so it's just gonna give me a blue screen. Uh, so we'll just go right back to Android real quick and uh, pops back up, uh, shouldn't take more than a second to flip back over to Android, there it goes. So, anyway, this is the overall of the iRulu uh, 2600 Lumen with uh, built-in Wi-Fi and Android uh, projector. You guys can pick it up on Amazon. Uh, I will just bounce back one second here to finish up the video, and I hope you guys enjoy it. Okay guys, that was my review of the iRulu 2600 Lumen LED projector with Android and Wi-Fi module built in. Again, you can pick it up on Amazon. You'll have a link in the description below where you can check that out. Uh, Luke from Galaxy Tech Review. Questions or comments about this guy? Leave them in the comment section below. I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Please remember to like and subscribe and I'll check you guys out on the next video.